Yo, what's good everyone? My name's Griffin Swanson and I'm here to talk some NHL DFS with you. But instead of focusing in on a specific slate in this video, I'm going to go over some general tips and tricks when it comes to creating NHL DFS cash and GPP lineups. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like button on this video, subscribe to the Mayo Media Network, and check out their content on the Apple Pods, leave a five-star review, Pat and his team at the Mayo Media Network make their content very accessible on multiple different platforms. And hey, let us know in the comments below what type of questions do you have when it comes to creating NHL lineups or just some general practices that you use as well. But enough with the intro there, let's dive into how I attack an NHL DFS slate. Now we're going to leave this pretty informal. I honestly haven't even looked at this slate yet. It's a four-game slate on Sunday. It's February 7th. It's actually Super Bowl Sunday today, which is why you're seeing all four of those games played at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. But yeah, again, going to go about this pretty informal because outside of the players and pricing you see on my screen right now, haven't looked at anything else. So you're going to get a real live view of how I would attack this NHL slate here. But with that being said, the first thing I want to do is hop over to DraftKings Sportsbook and look at the numbers and lines there. So let's do that right now. Got a four game slate here. Now my fat head is in the way. So I'm going to move this over here. But the first thing I look at is the actual money line. So we got all four games listed right here. And the first thing I notice is the Vegas Golden Knights, the Panthers, the Dallas Stars and the Carolina Hurricanes are favored to win their games. And the Golden Knights and the Florida Panthers here in particular are supposed to smash. Next thing I want to look at here then is the actual total goals or implied total. I notice here every game is at five and a half, except for that Blackhawks and Stars game has an over under of six goals. So I want to have a little more attention there, but considering it's only a half goal difference from the other three games... It's not going to sway my decision making all that much, but it does stick out to me. Now, if it was, there were a few games here with six and a half goals that had some shootout potential, I'd probably have a little more focus on those compared to the games with five and a half goals, but five and a half to six, not a huge difference there. So really, I'm probably going to attack all four of these games here the same. Now, I definitely want to be attacking the teams that are projected to win this game, especially the Vegas Golden Knights and the Florida Panthers. Now, I would normally put these numbers down on a spreadsheet. Not going to be doing that here. If you guys have watched any of my NHL DFS videos, really, at all this season, you see what that spreadsheet looks like. And I use that when it comes to creating my NHL DFS lineups. So scroll back on the Mayo Media Network or check me out at DFS. Have plenty of NHL content posted there as well, but that will give you an idea of what my spreadsheet looks like. So once I have these numbers down, I put them on the spreadsheet and then I start creating my player pools. So we're going to hop back over to DraftKings at this time and start going through the players and the pricing. So for convenience sake, I actually went and pulled open a spreadsheet here. Definitely go back and check out my previous videos on the Mayo Media Network or on my channel at DFS to get a better idea of how I go about this NHL content. But with that being said, wanted to pull open a spreadsheet here quickly just to show you what that looks like. Now you can see here, listing out those highest implied totals here in the top left-hand corner and the teams that are projected to win in their Vegas odds in the bottom left-hand corner. Now this is from a previous slate, not for the Sunday slate that we're going to talk about here, but just wanted to give you an idea of what my spreadsheet looks like when I'm creating my player pool. So back to DraftKings here. All right, so now that I know the implied totals for these four games and the teams that are projected to win, I'm going to go through the players and the pricing here. And what I do is I just go position by position, looking at the players that stick out to me based off their matchup and their pricing. Now, folks, I've been studying the game of hockey for 15, 20 plus years. I had skates on my feet when I was three years old from northern Minnesota. So you're basically just surrounded by hockey when you're born in northern Minnesota. That being said, um, I know 99% of these players. I actually know 99% of these lines that they play on. And so when I'm going through these players and pricing, 
a lot of it just really sticks out to me, so I'll try to be good about that. Um, but it, it's just one of those things. The more you look at something, the more time you spend on something, the more you're going to get familiar with it and the better you're going to get at it. Now, I am by no means the best NHL DFS hockey player in the world, but I am very familiar with these players and I can recognize a price mismatch. So I'm going to go through that, try to explain when I can find those price mismatches, and I'm also going to show you how I attack line stacking and pairing up guys as well. So kicking it off at the center position here, what I normally do is I actually just take a scroll through all the players and pricing here to begin with. Don't dive too deep into it. I'm going to go through this a little faster than I normally would, but I'm just trying to find if there's any value here, any price mismatches, or just some players that are sticking out to me in general. So again, going through this a little faster than normal, but I just like to take a little scroll through here. Once we get to that mid 2.5, 2.6K range, I usually scroll back up. Now I'm going to do the same thing here with the wingers, do the same thing here with the defensemen. I obviously don't need to do that in this video here, but that's exactly, I just want to go through and say, hey, is there any value that's sticking out to me? Any price mismatches, so on and so forth. So I'll do that position by position and just give me a better idea of, okay, what players are out there? What are their pricing? Who are they playing tonight? And just get a high-level overview of which players I like right away. So kicking it off with the centers here, again, now that I know the implied team totals and which teams are favored to win, I just kind of want to get a high-level overview of which players we have available and their pricing. So what I do is I just go position by position, just kind of scrolling through these players pretty quickly. Now I'm going to go through this quicker than I normally would, but just want to give you an idea here of what I would do. So I just scroll through here and see, okay, are there any guys that stick out to me, any price mismatches, and any value at the position. Now, once I get down to this mid 2K range, I'm scrolling back up. I usually don't spend lower than $2,700 at the forward position and usually above 3K for that matter. But sometimes we can find value below 3K. It is rare, but we can find that. So again, just going through this a little quicker than normal. One guy who sticks out to me here right away, Max Domi at $4,000. Played with Patrick Laine last game, so that's intriguing. But they are playing the Hurricanes here, one of the better defensive teams to start the season. So I don't love it necessarily. Jordan Stahl also sticks out to me. Looking at his fantasy points per game, 10.2 DraftKings points per game to start the season. Not bad at $4,600, so that sticks out to me as well. Maybe William Carlson with 10 points per game as well, but not that I'm in love with really below this 6K range. Honestly, the guys that are sticking out to me are right at the top. Barkov and Pavelski. We know Florida are heavy favorites in this game against Detroit, and Dallas is projected to win as well in a game that has an implied total of six goals. So honestly, those are the two guys that are sticking out to me right away. Now I do the same thing here with the wingers, defenseman, and goalie as well. Going to go through this even quicker, but I just kind of do a high-level overview like the Vegas Golden Knights in this matchup here. Max Pacioretty, 7.5K. Where's Mark Stone? Probably too cheap. Yep, there he is. 6.6k and I just go again through a high level overview of which players are sticking out to me I know Anthony DeClaire plays with Barkov on that first line $5,000 not a bad price now we're getting down into 3k range again and we can find value here but again just doing that high level overview and same thing with defensemen here so on and so forth throughout the goalies but let's dive into the actual statistics that I'm looking for when I choose these players for cash games and GPPs. So now I've looked at the implied totals, which teams are favored to win. I've gone through each position. I know the players and the pricing available. Now I'm starting to build up that spreadsheet with which players I want to play in my lineups here tonight. So we're going to start from a cash game perspective. Now, like most cash games, what you want to be doing is rostering the best players with the highest upside. You don't necessarily need to stack them up. It might make sense, but you don't need to do that. You just want to be playing the best players with the most upside. So again, we're trying to find guys that have potential to get on the score sheet, shooting the puck a lot, blocking shots, 
playing top power play minutes. Those are statistics that you want to be targeting. So we can dive into each one of these players individually here and look at their actual game log. But before I even do that, I actually like to hop over to NHL.com and look at general team statistics. NHL does a very good job of laying this out here. So there's a number of different things that we can actually look at. So we can see the actual goals for per game. So we can see which teams are scoring goals a lot. You know, the Dallas Stars here are scoring a lot of goals. They're playing on this slate against the Chicago Blackhawks. So maybe I want to check here, okay, how many goals are the Blackhawks allowing per game? They are allowing... 3.08 goals per game. So top 12 in goals allowed. You can see here again, the Dallas Stars are leading the league in goals per game or tied with the Montreal Canadiens. So that sticks out to me. Okay, the Stars are playing the Blackhawks at home. They are favored to win. They're leading the league in goals scored and the Blackhawks are top 12 in allowing goals. That seems like a recipe for success for me. So that's one thing that would stick out to me right away. I want to target Dallas Stars players because of that. Another thing we can look at here is power play and penalty kill. So we can see what teams are leading the league with power play percentage. Again, the Dallas Stars stick out, but also so do the Chicago Blackhawks, the Florida Panthers. These are some teams that we have made available to us tonight. Let's just check out the penalty kill here. What teams haven't been that great when shorthanded? So I notice here Detroit Red Wings bottom three when killing penalties. And again, the Florida Panthers top four power play percentage. So those are things that would stick out to me. I say, okay, Florida's playing Detroit tonight. They're minus 220 to win this game. Pretty heavy favorites there. They have a top five power play and Detroit has a bottom three penalty kill. Again, another recipe for success. So those are things I want to be targeting. You can definitely get slight advantages and give you a better idea of what players you should be targeting based off of general team statistics. Now it's also important to be looking at individual statistics as well. Just because a team is firing on all cylinders doesn't necessarily mean those third or fourth line guys are contributing on the power play, but maybe on the penalty kill. So again, we can definitely dive into these individual players here and I will be doing that, but I like to get another high level overview from general team statistics before I even start drilling in to these individual player statistics. All right, now that we've gone through the Vegas odds and the team statistics, I have a better idea of which teams I wanna be targeting here on this four game slate. So from a cash game side of things, looks like we wanna be targeting Florida Panthers players Dallas Stars, and Vegas Golden Knights players. Now, that's not to say we're only restricted to those three teams. There's definitely going to be value on these other teams as well. You need to find that value, but those three teams have the best odds tonight. They should score quite a few goals, or at least they're projecting to, and the team statistics back up why we should be playing players from these teams. So that's a nice way that I like to go about how I attack cash games. Obviously, we haven't dove into the players yet, but it also gives me a better idea from a GPP side of things as well. We know that Florida, Dallas, and Vegas are going to be popular, so we can still go that route when creating GPP lineups, but maybe we get away from that a little bit as well and make our lineups different or more contrarian by targeting the opposite team. So it kind of just, again, gives me that high-level overview of the entire slate before I start creating my lineups. So I've shown you my beginning process here now and how I get that high-level overview of the slate. Now that I have a good idea of what teams and players I want to be targeting from those teams, there's one more thing that I look at, and that's the actual lines and power plays on each of these teams. So I head over to our friends at Left Wing Lock to find that information. They make it very, very easy to find all of these lines, the stacks that we can attack, the power plays that are being used, and a lot more than just that. But I keep it pretty simple here. I just go to the skaters, head over to the line combinations. That's gonna lay out every team for us here. Now we know that we're gonna be targeting Florida, we're gonna be targeting Vegas on this slate, so let's just hop in to one of those teams. We'll do Florida here. So right away, it's gonna show you Florida Panthers, even strength, game day. Now we have different options here. We can go to their last game, most three games, or most recent three games, most recent 10 games, so on and so forth. We can see actual even strength, power play, penalty kill, and overtime too. So a lot of stuff here that we can look at. I want to look at even strength, and I want to look at their last game here. So this is going to show me 
how they finished last game. And it's beautiful because it shows you the actual percentages of these lines that were used in that game. So I can see here Huberdo, Hornquist, Lusterinen, however you pronounce that damn name, was used a lot, just as much as Barkov, Verhage, and Duclair. Now, Barkov, Verhage, and Duclair are technically that first line. So, again, just gives us an idea of what line pairings were used in the previous game. Now, we can do the previous three games as well here, and I will do that from time to time. Again, I I'm studying these slates a lot, so I typically know beforehand what lines were used in the previous game, but... If I'm a little unsure, I might go, you know what, I know they were mixing some things up in those top two, top three lines. Now let's just look at the last three games here and see if those have been consistent. I can see there's a little bit more inconsistency with that second line, but ultimately that first line is remaining together. So that's how we can attack our line stacks and just pairing guys together as well. So we know this from a forward perspective. We can also look at the defense if we want to as well. Uh, I'm a little less concerned than that. It's very rare you'll see me pair up defensemen in my uh, DraftKings lineup. Have I done it before? Yeah, but more times than not, if I do that, both of those defensemen are playing on the top power play as well. So for example, Montreal, Jeff Petrie, and Shea Weber. That one might make sense, but not something I typically do. That being said, the forwards, this is very important when it comes to line stacking. Left wing lock will show you the percentages that these lines were actually used together. Now on top of that, I also want to be looking at the power plays here as well, just to see if there's some correlation between between those line stacks and the power play too. So this power play here, we're looking at the last three games for Florida. I can see Barkov. We don't have his other two line mates on this first power play for Hagee, nor do we have Duclair. Looks like they're playing on that second power play. Now Barkov does play a little bit with those guys. Looks like about 15% with Duclair and about 7.5% with Verhage. So a little bit of time there where he's playing with those guys as well. So it might make sense to stack them up. Um, but ultimately it looks like Barkov isn't playing with those guys on the power play 75% of the time, which is a significant amount of the time. Now that's not saying I won't stack up Barkov with Verhage or Duclair in my GP. PP lineup, but I might avoid it in my cash lineup just because they're not getting that special team time together as well. Now, ultimately, uh, there's a lot of things that go into creating your lineups, but first look here, I noticed Barkov, Verhage, Duclair, they play on that first line together quite a bit, but the power play time, that's not quite there as much as I'd like it to be. But that's all going to come into play when we're creating our cash lineups and GPP lineups. So let's pack, hop back over to DraftKings. All right, so we've looked at the game lines. We've looked at the team stats. We've looked at the lines and pairings and power plays. We're ready to go to start building some lineups. So to wrap up this video here, I'm going to put together a cash lineup and a GPP lineup for this four game slate. So kicking it off with the cash lineup here again, we just wanna be playing the best players with the best value, with the most upside and the best matchups. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but once you start creating these lineups, you're gonna get the hang of it. So at the center position here, I've gone through each one of these positions here now. I know that I probably wanna spend up at the center position. And honestly, it's these top two guys right away, Barkov and Pavelski. We're targeting Florida guys. We're targeting Dallas guys. We know that this Florida power play has been very good. That Detroit penalty kill has been very bad. We know that Dallas loves to score goals. And we know that Chicago has given up a lot of goals this year. So I'm going to go with these two guys right away. They play on that top line and they play on their top power play. Now, what I typically do once I have my first two guys locked and loaded, whether that's centers, wingers, or a mixture of both, maybe defensemen, but I typically get those guys last, I like to lock in my goaltender. Because the goaltender, it's very rare they're going to be below $7,000, and if they are, I'm probably not playing them in cash, probably only GPPs for me at that point. Now, Bob Bobrovsky and Drieger both look good here against Detroit. My cause for concern there, though, is they don't see a lot of shots. I actually kind of like these Vegas goalies a little bit better. I think LA has a little bit more firepower, not a whole lot more, um, but they have been shooting the puck a little bit more, and so I'm going to roll with 
the Vegas goaltenders here. Now, Flurry got the start last game. They have been going back and forth, but Flurry has by far been the better goaltender between the two. Now, we don't know which goaltender is starting here technically right now, um, which is a bit odd because we only got 40 minutes to lock. But with that being said, uh, I'm not playing this this actual lineup because I'm creating the video, so I'm going to jam in Flurry here. Now, again, that very well could be Robin Leonard. That's something we would need to keep an eye on, and we would actually need to leave $200 on the table as well, just in case he doesn't play or be ready to pivot to one of those goaltenders below. But that being said, I suspect it will be Flurry. He's certainly been the better goaltender of the two. All right, so I got my top two forward plays, and I got my goaltender solidified. So I have $4,500 left for each player. That doesn't mean I'm not going to spend up at some of these expensive wing plays, because there's a lot of upside here. First guy that I want is Mark Stone. I think he should be $7,000. He plays with Max Pacioretty on that first line, plays on that first power play. Hell, I'd stack them up together sometimes, even in my cash lineup. Just don't know if I'll have enough money to do that in this lineup here. That being said, Stone, I believe, is too cheap in this matchup at $6,600. So $4,100 left. We already got some exposure to Florida. We got some exposure to Dallas and Vegas. So the three teams that we wanted to target, we have exposure to all three of those teams right away. Now I probably need to start finding some value here a little bit. So... I noticed there's a guy down here, Anthony Mantha, $4,100. He's playing on that top power play. He plays on that second line. I wish he was playing with Dylan Larkin, but he's been good enough. Four goals, three assists, seven points in 12 games, eight points or DraftKings points per game, basically doubling his average here. Now I shoot for about three times value when I'm creating cash lineups. If you can hit 150 DraftKings points in your hockey cash lineup, you're damn near pretty much guaranteed to be in the money. So he's averaging double his DraftKings price right away. Can he get that extra four DraftKings points? Absolutely. If we look at, take a look at his game log here, i got to move my fat head out of the way again. You can see here 3, 11, 20, 14. Just in the last four games, he's hit 12 points or gone above basically in three of those games. So this is a value play that's sticking out to me. No, I don't love Detroit. This matchup doesn't look necessarily great, but it doesn't look horrible either. Mantha playing enough minutes, plays on the top power play. This is a value play here for me. All right, so that brings the price up. Well, not much at all, actually. So let's hop down to this defenseman here. I typically will pay down at defenseman unless there's some crazy value that I can find. If Victor Hedman is on the slate, uh, I might consider playing him as well. That being said, I just don't think I'm going to be able to pay up for defenseman on the slate. Really, the only guy I would want to pay up for is Shea Theodore, but he's too expensive here at $7,300. So... Let's go down here to the 4K range because that's basically what we're left with with price. All right, Seth Jones sticks out to me. Why? Because, well, Zach Wierenski is out. Now, they do play together, and so that might be one of those situations where I play them together in a lineup. Neither guy has got on the score sheet this year to start the season quite like they have in the past, but with Wierenski out, I do suspect we'll see Jones play more minutes play on that top power play, and just be able to rack up and get more opportunity in this game in general, considering Wierenski is out. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Jones play 25, 26, 27 minutes in that game. So $4,700 for a guy that's averaging just below six DraftKings points. No, that's not typically something I would play. And it's not the best matchup here against Carolina either. But I want to find guys that are getting opportunity in big minutes. And honestly, below this 5K range, there's nothing really that's sticking out to me outside of Jones based off the opportunity that he's going to get. He's a talented player. I know this. So I'm going to make that jump there, make a leap, if you will, for a guy that's only averaged six DraftKings points to start the season. So some might fade that, but uh, I'm going to go off of opportunity, ice time, and just being able to rack up points on the score sheet or block shots as well. That's the type of player that Seth Jones is. He's very well-rounded. $3,900 left here, so going to have to continue to pay down. I know Christian Dejuice here, Dejuice, excuse me, $3,200 is getting big minutes for Detroit right now. 
do I love that I want to put two Detroit players in my cash lineup? No, but these are value plays. I'm combining Mantha and Juice here for $7,300 combined. So, you know, we look at a guy like Max Pacioretty, some of these other high-priced forwards. They're above that. Yes, Max Pacioretty could outscore Mantha and Juice. He very well could. But, unfortunately, that's not the way that these lineups work. I have to fill out this entire roster. So, I'm going to add to Juice there. $3,200 playing on that top power play and playing anywhere from 18 to 22 minutes right now. That's a value play for me at $3,200. All right, so we're left with a winger. And a utility play left here. So I'm still going to have to try and find some value somewhere. I've already gone through these players here. And I know one guy towards the bottom here, McGinn. Brock McGinn has a goal, actually two goals in his last three games. He's going to offer some value on this slate here. Why? Well, because he's playing on that first line right now with Sebastian Ajo and Andrei Svechnikov. And Martin Nikas is out in this game. I'm not 100% sure if we're going to see McGinn slide into that second power play role, but Nikas was there. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see McGinn fill in for that, but even if he doesn't, $3,200 for a guy that plays on that top power pl- or excuse me, that top line with Svechnikov and Aho, two very talented forwards. Again, another value play for me. So $5,500 left over here. Maybe you go, you know what, I, I want to pivot away from McGinn here and fit in two guys that are $4,000, or you stick on this route here and you go, okay, I got $5,500 left, how do we fill in that utility spot? We could go with a guy like Jonathan Marcheseau, who plays on that second line and second power play for Vegas. We could go with a guy like Carter Verhage here, who plays on that first line and second power play for Florida. You could stack them up with Barkov. Number of different options here. Personally, I do like Verhage here. We already took a look at those Florida lines. And yeah, I think Barkov was only playing, what, 7.5% of the time on the power play with Verhage. But they're playing about 20% of the time, 5-on-5 together. And honestly, Verhage has been very good to start the year here. Six goals, three assists, nine points in his first eight games. And uh, really looks to be clicking with Barkov and Duclair on that first line. So I'm going to fire him up against Detroit. So that is how I would put together a cash lineup. Now, obviously, we did this on the fly here today. Usually, I have three screens pulled up with all these different sites and statistics. I'm like Dexter in his laboratory. But... Being that, I'm putting this together in a video. I did it a little more informally, but again, just gives you an idea of how we're attacking cash lineups. We want to be finding the best players with the best value in the best matchups. We don't need to get too crazy with stacking up players, even though it does work sometimes. So again, a very informal way I put this together, but it gives you an idea of how I approach a cash lineup. All right, now the fun part of the video, putting together a GPP lineup. Hell, I'm just going to do this on the fly here as well. No idea who I want to put together in a GPP lineup. So what should we do here? We know that Florida should beat up on Detroit. We know that this Columbus Carolina game could be low scoring. Dallas Chicago does have the highest implied total. Dallas could beat up on them there. Vegas, same situation as Florida. We should expect an easy win there. So how do we attack this? Well, I'm going to go with some of these Vegas players for sure. I might stack up one of these lines out of Dallas. And then maybe we run it back with some of these Columbus players that might not have a whole lot of exposure to them. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so let's kick it off here with Vegas. I'm going to highlight in on this particular team. I'm going to throw in Flower there. I'm expect expecting him to get the start. Now, I absolutely love the pairing of Max Pacioretty and Mark Stone. I'm going to fire them up as well. Pretty expensive, to be honest. What does it look like if we put Shea Theodore in here? Okay, doable, doable. Um, yeah, let's leave this as is for now. So that gives me a pairing of Pacioretty and Stone playing on the first line together, first power play. They're going to play plenty of time with Shea Theodore as well. They all play on that top power play. Let me just go back here to left wing lock just to confirm that. We're going to go to the pass game, even strength. 
Okay, patch ready stone, 25% as expected. Let's check out this power play here quickly. Fedor, patch ready, and stone, 81.5% of the power play time. Is that good enough? I think that's pretty damn good. So yeah, those guys getting a lot of ice time and a lot of power play time together. All right, I like that. That's a good way to start this stack. Yeah, it's expensive, but $4,100, we can certainly work with that. Now, the question is, how do we finish this lineup here? Do we run another line stack? Do we sprinkle in some individual players from teams that we like? I think that's the question that you need to ask yourself. I've done that both ways. Um, sometimes I'll do a game stack. Maybe I run this back with a line in LA thinking that this game turns into a shootout. That's not how it's projecting. Maybe we do that with Dallas and Chicago in this instance here, but that's definitely one way we can do it. We can do a completely different line stack from a completely different game, or we can just fill in the rest of the lineup here with random players. I've literally done all of those scenarios. There's a lot of different ways that we can attack GPP lineups. We got to get unique, right? We got to get contrarian, but don't fade the popular players either, especially in hockey. You know, I get that question a lot as well. You know, do we play the chalk? Guys, on a four-game slate or less, I understand players might be more chalky, but there's plenty of players in the 4 to 3K range that can allow us to make our lineups contrarian. And if we're talking 8-plus games, 10, 12 games, do not worry about the chalk. Play the best of the best. Worst case, they're going to have 10, 15% ownership, and honestly, you'll likely get most players below 10%. So... Hockey, I don't worry about the chalk as much. Football, absolutely. You know, if Christian McCaffrey's only $8,000, yeah, he's going to be owned in probably 70-plus lineups. So maybe in GPPs you do fade that, but hockey, it's really not like that. So I really don't worry about the chalk too much. That being said, what I like doing in this lineup here is running it back with that second line out of Columbus. I think I don't think there's going to be a lot of exposure in that game on this four-game slate, so I like attacking Columbus, especially considering Carolina's been one of the better defensive teams to start the year. People are probably going to want to fade that. So it's a GPP. Let's get different with our lineups, and let's stack up that second line. So again, I can just focus in on them here. I already went through, and we can do this here quickly. I'll go through and say, okay, who is that Columbus second line? Submit. Now, this is the game day projections here, and this is actually power play. Excuse me. Go to even strength, and we'll scroll down. We see that second line. Texier, Bjorkstrand, Domi. Now, if we just take a look at the power play here as well quick, we're expecting to see Domi be on that first power play with Texier, but we don't see Bjorkstrand. He is, however, playing on that second power play, so I'm comfortable with that. So let's fire those guys up here. Max Domi, and hop over to the wingers. We got Texier and Bjorkstrand. All right, so that leaves us with two players left over. I know one guy we featured earlier was Christian DeJuice, but I like him in GPPs as well. He's getting a lot of ice time, playing on that top power play, and affordable at $3,200. So $3,400 left over to find us a centerman. I already know who I want here. Let's go back to all games. $3,400. That leaves us with a few options here. Nemestikov, Wenberg, Faxa, Soderberg. I'm going to go with Alex Wenberg here. The reason being is he's playing on that second line with Jonathan Huberto and Patrick Hornquist, and he's playing on that second power play for Florida as well. So sign me up for that. He only has two assists to start the season, but he's getting a lot of ice time here. He is more of a playmaker, and he's playing with two goal scorers. Hasn't been great since he's come over to Florida here from Columbus, but... Maybe this is where he figures his game out against a pretty bad Detroit team. So that's how we can put together a GPP lineup. Stack up lines, stack up power plays, and just make your lineup make sense. You wouldn't want to stack up a Vegas Golden Knights line like I have here, Pacioretty, Stone, and Theodore, and then play Jonathan Quick in your goaltender position. It's not going to work. It doesn't correlate. We can certainly get unique with our lineups, but just make sure they're not defeating each other either. Um, we can really get creative when it comes to GPPs, but stacking up lines and power plays is a popular way to do that, and it gets you exposure to a lot of points 
gives your lineup a lot of upside, but it can also bring that floor down a little bit too. So that's why we don't do this in cash very often, stacking up a full line together. We just want to be playing the best plays, but GPPs you know, give me exposure to that full line or that full power play because if they have themselves a night, could shoot your lineup towards the top of a GPP. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap up this video here for today. As always, thank you all for tuning in. If you could hit that like and subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate that. You don't want to miss out on any of the content that the Mayo Media Network is posting Monday through Sunday, and they have a lot of it. Again, let us know in the comments below what questions do you have in regards to attacking NHL DFS or just some general strategies that you use yourself. Always love learning how other people attack these slates. Again, thank you all for tuning in. Let's have a great day, folks. I'm out of here.